what it's like when they do SNL. Hey everybody, this is Dan Sixsmith. How are you doing? There we go. Am I back here? I think so. Hey, what's going on? Dan Sixsmith here. Happy to be with you. For those of you to, that don't know me, which is probably uh, many of you, I'm the host of a podcast called Sales is King, where we talk about um, the challenges facing salespeople today um, in transitioning from kind of the old way of selling to the way that buyers um, want them to sell today, um, the way buyers want to buy. So we've got a podcast called Sales is King. I also do videos on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram where we, um, we talk about what's required today to be an effective seller um, in this changing digital landscape. So um, one of the things, and one of the things I decided I wanna do more of is actually live streaming video. And I thought it might be a great opportunity to do some live Q&A as we start to build a little bit of momentum on this platform, perhaps doing it at the same time every day or um, at different times, um, to talk about some sales challenges and sales issues and kick around some of the things that perhaps you're wrestling with that I might be able to help you with um, and discuss, and perhaps some other people in the group may have some interesting ideas. But um, I think there is a lot of information for us to know today, and I think we need to be well educated because I've got to kind of turn them off. But, um, you know, so it's not just enough today to be a hustler and to be a hard worker. Um, we absolutely have to know what to do and um, which levers to pull and how to go about doing that. So we try and provide um, different strategies, different tactics, different examples. Um, we often uh, interview experts on the podcast, um, which we do on video. And um, hey, thanks for joining. Uh, we're doing some live Q&A on sales. And we do some interviews of experts. We talk about some studies, which we're gonna talk about a little bit today. Um, as to what's affecting um, salespeople and how can they do better? What do buyers want? And why are salespeople not measuring up today? <clears throat> what do we have to do to sell more effectively? So um, I wanted to start off and, and definitely please send it, you know, the idea for today is Q&A on sales. You know, what are you wrestling with? Um, what could I help you with? What are some of the challenges um, and I love this one. I'm getting emails here. I'm probably going to have to turn the emails off to do this, but I um, like to do this a little more regularly. So um, I wanted to go through a new study, and I thought that'd be interesting way to start and start the conversation, assuming some people join, which, uh, you know, listen, so like anything else, you got to put yourself out there, right? So, um, you know, the first time I did a video, I was like, wow, you know, I'm going to go out on video. And now I've done 85 of them. And um, podcasting was the same way. I did one episode and now we're up to episode 53. So, you know, we got to push out our comfort zones. And I fully expected in doing a um, live stream that uh, perhaps no one would show up. Um, but we've had, you know, and that's fine. You have to start somewhere. It's, it's practice. And it's really just me trying to add some value, trying to help uh, folks um, that might need help. Um, in sales because it has become more challenging. Um, there's a lot to know. And um, the people that get it right stand to uh, make a ton of money and do exceptionally well because there's a lot of people that haven't figured out that things have changed. And the danger is, is that many companies um, have fallen into this same trap, no longer exist. So my contention is that salespeople um, are being... Um, affected right now, that they need to either transform themselves into modern sellers or they are going to be displaced. And um, that's the key challenge that's facing us today. So um, I wanted to talk about a new study because, um, and, until we get some more questions or a question, um, but um, new study from CSO Insights, which talks about um, buyer preferences you know, how do they think we're doing in sales today? And uh, man, these emails are bothering me. I'm going to have to figure out how to turn off the programs um, before we go next time. But, you know, what are buyers 
um, expecting? You know, what do they think of sales people today? Um, the bottom line on this is they think salespeople are basically average. You know, um, they're not necessarily um, giving them what they need. Um, they like them to do better. And we've heard this um, really so many times before. Um, so we really need to start making an impact and start moving these numbers. And I'd love to see some of these survey numbers start swinging toward, um, you know, buyers being delighted with salespeople. But um, let's go through a few of the interesting points on this because I think it's uh, stuff that we really need to um, be aware of. And the premise of the study is basically saying that buyers have changed. And I gave a presentation on this back at um, the Salesforce conference a couple of years ago. You know, buyers have changed, sellers have not. You know, buyers have evolved the way that they buy and sellers have not evolved um, in the way they sell. And by the way, you should check out a company called Mediafly because they have an, uh, a, a solution um, and a methodology called Evolved Selling. Um, you should also, also check out Alinean, which um, promotes value selling and consultative selling. And this is kind of where we need to go um, if we're going to be successful. So, you know, so basically they think salespeople are doing an average job. Um, they're not necessarily, um, you know, blowing them away or delivering the type of experiences that they are uh, wanting from sales. And, you know, one of the big challenges is that um, buyers want sellers to come into the process later um, in the process, right? So, um, you know, they want to do research, and we've heard this ad nauseum, right? They want to do their own research. They want to look at case studies, um, and then they want to talk to sales. And, and, but what that does is it puts us uh, as salespeople in a um, disadvantaged position because we're coming in late. Uh, we could be coming in um, at what we, we call the bake-off phase where, um, you know, we're being pitted against uh, other vendors, you know, so we don't have a we don't have a chance to set the buying agenda, and that's where Forrester says that seventy six percent of the wins go uh, when you can set the buying agenda. So from this report, the key um, thing that sales needs to do um, is that we need to be able to figure out how to connect early, how to get into that buying process early, um, and to be um, valuable enough to deliver something of value to get that prospect to invite you in earlier. Because right now they don't want you. They don't want you early. They want to be doing uh, research on their own. Kind of reminds me of myself actually when I go into a store with my wife um, for clothes shopping. I just want to look. I don't want to be bothered by the salesperson to tell you the truth. Um, and I'm in sales, you know. So that, what that says about me. But she, um, you know, she'd be a great prospect for for me or for anyone in sales because she, she engages a salesperson right away. She wants help. But, you know, the reality is, I think, from a buying perspective is, you know, you can do a lot of this research, um, you know, on your own. But there's a lot of information out there today. You know, you really need someone to help take you through this. So, I, I you know, I implore all of us in sales to be able to go out and, um, you know, try to connect in early in the process and show that we can – that we can deliver value. So, you know, let's go through some of this information. Let's see if we get some calls or attendees um, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So, um, you know, buyers, let's see what they're saying. You know, what are their preferences, right? So when they're trying to solve problems, you know, and we're all about, you know, trying to solve um, buyer issues and challenges. But, you know, unfortunately they're saying, Salespeople are folks that they turn to only a small percentage of the time. So the number one, um, but, but here's an interesting point. 43% want to hear from subject matter experts or third parties, okay? So here, here, here we go. So here's a major opportunity because all the way down at 23% is vendor salespeople. So I think the key for us is going to be, um, do we want to be a vendor salesperson or do we want to be a subject matter expert? Okay, because 
Um, the subject matter experts are who the buyers want to hear from. And I think it's really incumbent upon us as modern sellers to become subject matter experts, um, to be posting content, to be writing articles. And I've said this for those of you who follow me on um, you know, other mediums. You know, I've said this hundreds of times, but we have to publish uh, articles. We have to do videos, right? We have to, um, you know, be active on social. We can take the mantle of the subject matter expert. You know, no one needs to crown us that. We can establish that on our own by pushing out content. So what happens is when the research occurs, um, when these buyers are out researching, um, they're going to find you. They're going to find your article, your video, um, you know, anything else that you post, you know, they're going to see you as a subject matter expert and you immediately rise to the top of who they want to speak to. And you immediately give yourself a, an advantage over the quote unquote vendor salesperson, you know, the person that's going to be the demo jockey, you know, and we talked about this, right? The demo is, the demo to me means nothing if we haven't uncovered buyer problems and challenges. So, you know, um, let's figure out how to become subject matter experts. And we do that by understanding your field better than anybody else. You know, uh, learning, um, you know, going out, pushing out videos. I'm trying to, I'm going to need my glasses for this thing too. The print is like tiny. Um, but hey, we're, we're giving it a shot. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, you know, next is, you know, they're looking for past experience with a vendor if they've worked with somebody before. Um, 35% um, uh, use that uh, method to solve problems. And uh, again, to me, that's an opportunity for us in sales, you know, in terms of uh, referrals. Are we asking for referrals from our current customer base? Because chances are they know somebody who is looking for um, the same solution and they could potentially refer them to us. So very important. Um, industry events and trade shows and conferences, um, very important still, but difficult, you know, um, unless you're getting a speaking engagement, which I highly recommend. If you go stand up as a subject matter expert, as a presenter at one of these industry trade shows and conferences, you're in good, you're in good shape. Peers and colleagues, number two is the next one. Uh, online communities and social networks, right? We've talked about this a lot. Are you an active participant in social networks or do you just have a profile that sits out there? Um, are you engaging your community? Are you asking questions? Are you starting groups? Are you putting out videos? Um, you know, are you um, posting? Are you commenting? You know, um, that's going to be a great, great advantage for you in trying to connect with buyers early in the process. Web searches, of course, is, is the next one. Um, then, of course, vendor salespeople way down the list, followed by, lastly, national professional trade associations, which, okay, fine. So um, that is key to me, and there's tremendous opportunity there. Um, the next thing. When do buyers prefer to uh, engage salespeople? And we just, we just talked about this, but um, late, late in the process. Um, not when they're identifying and clarifying needs, which is where we need to be in, uh, in order to make some serious headway for ourselves. Um, so 70% wait until after they have fully defined their needs. 70%, okay, wait until after they have fully defined and identified their needs. That's bad for us because we're going to be thrown into this pit of the bake-off where, you know, and the RFPs and all that nonsense where we have really no chance to effectively, um, you know, understand those needs and define Help them define and uncover the issues. You know what I mean? So um, that's a big one. Um, and we have to really figure out how to connect early. And that's really what we talk about in uh, on the podcast and with um, some of the guests that I have on. So Sales is King, if you're interested, anchor.fm is the platform. Sales is King um, is the show. And uh, you should check it out. <clears throat> We're having a lot of fun with it. 
Um, okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, okay, so let's see what they are saying about sales performance. And, um, you know, one of the things, of course, that we, and I hear this a lot when I go out, is, is um, you know, uh, hey, I'm losing to uh, the status quo more so than I'm losing to competitors. Um, I'm losing to apathy. So, you know, what, what that says to me is that we need to engage earlier and we also need to demonstrate um, the pain. You know, because what we've learned in neuroscience is that people are more likely to move away from a pain than toward a gain. So before we can talk about benefits effectively, we need to talk about the pain or the challenges. For example, um, you know, if I were a car repairman um, and I told you that I've got these great new brakes, um, I did a safety check, but I've got these great new brakes and they've got really nice looking metal around the outside and they've got super, uh, you know, traction ability and uh, all these fantastic benefits, you know, you might say, oh, okay, well, you know, I mean, so what? But if I tell you that I did a safety check and if you keep the current brakes, you're going to wind up driving off the road and potentially killing yourself. Um, now I've got your attention. Now there's a risk um, in standing pat, okay? There's a risk in keeping the same brakes. It could cost you your life, you know? So, now listen to my cute story on, on what these new brakes do. You'll be a lot more open-minded. So similarly, what we need to do is we need to open the buyer's mind with a conversation around what the status quo is costing them today. And that's how we fight um, apathy. Okay, next. Um, let's see here. So they talk about a few different buyer types. You know, there are... Um, Risk averse, there are risk takers. The risk takers are more open to listening to sales early on. Obviously, the risk averse are not. Um, the skeptics certainly are not. You know, you know those guys. They're just kind of naysayers. Um, so we need to identify, and the good news is there are some of those people out there, buyers that are open to listening to salespeople. Obviously, they'll be more open to listening to you if you are a... Um, subject matter expert. So we're about 19 minutes into this live stream. Um, no questions as of yet, but that's fine. Uh, we got to start somewhere and I'm, I'm excited to be uh, beginning today and I'm excited to be able to present this information. Um, I'm sure it's going to be recorded and you guys could listen to it um, at your leisure. But um, let's go through, you know, what buyers are looking for when you do engage. And if you haven't heard some of these things before, then I would say, uh, you really need to do some homework. Um, so number one is, you know, the buyer wants the salesperson to understand my business, okay? Hey there, welcome. How you doing? We got Spain with us today. Um, if you got a question on sales, let me know. Uh, we're going through a study of uh, what business-to-business -business buyers are looking for um, when they deal with salespeople today. So Number one is understand my business, know me. And what that tells me is you've got to do homework and research before you go in, right? Um, what that means is you need to go to the search engines. You need to go to the social profiles. You need to know what is happening with this organization, with this buyer, with this buying group, what they're sharing, uh, what they're talking about. So when you go in, um, certainly you're going to ask some questions, but... There may be questions that you already know the answers to, and you're going to have a good sense of knowing how to position yourself um, the most effective way. Number two, they want salespeople to have um, excellent communication skills. This might go without saying, but in the digital age, um, even more highlighted. So you must be able to um, ask questions, listen, active listening, I call it. Um, I know others call it the same thing. Um, you must be able to speak well. You must be able to demonstrate empathy. You must be able to bring the buyer's emotions into it. There's a whole philosophy that I work with teams on uh, in my Sales is King training. 
Next, very interesting, have not heard this much, and I think it's huge to talk about. Focus on the post-sale, you know, um, the future state. What's gonna happen after they buy? I know all we care about is getting the paperwork done and getting our commissions and running to the bank, right? But um, they wanna know what happens next. You know, who am I working with? What's the process? You know, what will I learn? What will I gain? You know, uh, the customer experience. You've, you know, you're a representative, we're a representative. By the way, I'm a practitioner. I'm in sales, you know, and, and I also, train and, and help. So I'm, I'm a player coach. Um, and I think that's, that's key. I, I mean, I know, <clears throat> I know there are a lot of guys out there that, I'm um, just going to take a quick sip. I know there are a lot of guys out there that write books and have great, um, you know, theories on sales, but I do it for a living. I'm out there so I could speak to you from experience. Um, and okay. Thank you. All right, so um, anyway, so moving forward, let's go on to the next one. Um, so post-sale is critical. The next one is um, they want insights and perspective, okay? Um, and we've been hearing this for quite some time, right? They want, um, tell me something I don't know. You know, they want the salesperson to, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, any questions on sales, let me know. That's what we're talking about now, um, sales Q&A. Um, but, you know, we've been hearing this for a while. Um, insights. Tell me something I don't know. Bring me some industry information, you know. Um, tell me what other customers are doing. Tell me why I should listen to you, you know. So um, that's very important. So let's go over those four things again. Um, can't really see... Why don't I sell myself? Well, hey, look, you know, um, it's part of what's being out there. Okay, good. So, so let's, you know, again, number one, understand me, understand my business, right? Next, um, demonstrate excellent communication skills. That's speaking, listening. That's the follow-up. That's the emails. That's um, all of the communication. That it's effective. That it's tight. Um, that it's coherent and it makes sense and it adds value. Number three, focus on the post-sale. Show the buyer what's gonna happen uh, after he buys or she buys. What will be the process? What will they expect? Make them feel comfortable. Give them an idea of what they're gonna see going forward. So all very good points. Uh, there's a lot of detail around this. We could certainly go into some more of it and I will uh, put the link up. Um, let's see here. Let's see what else they're saying. So to me, you know, so far the most um, eye-opening uh, information from this has been the post-sale. Uh, the buyers want to know about the post-sale experience uh, for certain. And then secondly is um, just validating that we need to become subject matter experts, that we need to engage earlier or we're going to be stuck in the bake-offs. Um, but... <clears throat> It tells me that what we're doing is we're still going in and we're, and we're feature selling. Because um, if we were value selling, if we were consultative selling, if we were evolved selling, um, we'd be engaging these buyers. They wouldn't be uh, feeling like their experience was, um, you know, average. Uh, let's see. Again, they are looking for relationships, a trusted partner, uh, strategic contributor, you know, so, so, he, so here's something to think about, right? So, you know, I, I see this sometimes, I see it written, I see people saying, I'm a trusted partner, I'm a strategic contributor, you know, you can't just say this, you know, because you can't say it if you're not it. So in order to be a trusted partner or a strategic contributor, you, you have to go out and do that, you know, you have to um, demonstrate that you can talk strategy, that you can talk roadmap, that you can talk big picture, that you can talk challenges, that you can solve problems on your feet, um, that you can, um, you know, deliver these insights, right? Um, so you've got to develop these skills. You can't just say, yes, I'm a trusted partner. You know, hey, I'm a strategic advisor. No, you know, you have to show me. You have to show them. This is the show me era versus the tell me era. Show me. Um, 
Okay. Let's see if there's anything else. We're going to wrap up soon. Um, this was a, um, you know, an interesting uh, first uh, live uh, Q&A. But uh, hopefully we delivered some good information. And hopefully you guys can tune in uh, again. And we'll, we'll be doing this more frequently. Um, and um, so let me just go through and see if there's anything else in terms of wrapping this up. No, so that was kind of it. So, you know, just to summarize, um, there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, if we're in sales today, um, the first thing is to become self-aware, right? How am I doing? Am I a modern seller? Um, where am I falling short today? You know, that's the first step. Where do I need help? Um, and I could certainly help you. And there are plenty of groups out there that do a great job. But, you know, where am I falling short? Am I not getting people's interest early enough? Um, am I not getting people to come to a second meeting because I'm not delivering enough value? Um, am I unable to, to close? Am I unable to connect with the buying group? Um, you know, think these things through. You need, to, you need to step back and ask yourself these questions. And then you need to, to work with somebody, a coach, a mentor, um, on improving because that's key. So from the study, from the study today, um, we've got to do a better job in general with buyers. We need to understand how buyers want to buy. We need to establish ourselves as subject matter experts. We need to engage early when they're defining their issues and trying to figure out which solutions fit, as opposed to being called in at the end with the vendor salesperson where we're going to be throwing darts um, late and, and having a smaller chance than if we were um, in there early establishing the buying agenda. Also, when we do, and hi there, welcome. Uh, also, when we do engage with buyers, we need to talk about what's gonna happen post-sale. And this is what a lot of us might be forgetting about. You know, We need to paint that picture of the future state, what it's gonna be like you know, after they have uh, your solution, your product. But what it's going to be like to work with the team, you know, um, and, and, and the process and the benefits of the post-sale, you know, make them feel comfortable with that. That's extremely um, important. Um, again, validating what we've been hearing before, you got to go in prepared. Um, you got to demonstrate knowledge of the company, knowledge of what the buyer is looking for, um, subject matter expertise, um, which enables you to deliver insights and raises you to the strategic partner level, subject matter expert, which is the number one area where this, the buyers go to, um, versus the salesperson who's coming in slinging demos, you know, and is way down the list of, of where people want to engage. So, hey, thanks again. Uh, great, interesting beginning here on the Sales is King live Q&A. Hope to see you again soon. Give this thing a listen uh, when you got time and we'll be connecting soon. Have a great rest of your day. Dan Sixsmith saying so long for now. As soon as I can figure out how to turn this off, I will do so. There you go, guys. Peace.